Greetings mathematicians of all ages. <clears throat> Today we're going to be estimating products and quotients. We've already discussed in class that estimating has a few uses in life. There's certainly places in life that you want to be very exact for things like calculating <clears throat> how much weight a building has to hold or um, even just framing up a house. You don't want to estimate otherwise you'll have a crooked house and one that's not very sturdy. Uh, this chapter, we're going to be doing a lot of multiplying uh, decimals and dividing decimals. And the goal for today is if we can get <clears throat> a good estimation, we're going to be actually we're, we'll actually be able to see if we're anywhere in the ballpark of the correct answer. So let's jump right in. All right, the first kind would look something like this: four point nine times. I don't know, 6.3. So something like that. Like I said, later in the chapter, we'll discuss how to find the actual answer to that. Today, we're not terribly concerned about that. Okay. Now, for today, with multiplying and dividing for products and quotients, we're going to use something called compatible numbers. So why don't you write that in your notebooks? Compatible numbers. It's going to come up a lot this year. Compatible numbers. And really, all a compatible number is, is, <clears throat> or all they are, are numbers that I believe you can uh, do the operation with mentally. Okay? So, for one like this, let me get rid of that here. One like this, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to pick a number that's close to 4.9, kind of around that, and a number close to 6.3. Okay? So, the first example and probably the best answer for this would be something like 4.9 is close to 5, right? And then 6.3 is probably closest to 6, okay? Now, 5 times 6 is 30, we shall know that. And in this case, 5 and 6 are compatible numbers, and I would believe that most of us can do 5 times 6. Now, other potential answers for this, because again, we're just shooting for ballpark um, you know, you could do 5 and 7, you could maybe do 4 and 6, that might be stretching it a bit. But 4 is not terribly far away from 4.9, so these are all uh, decent compatible numbers, not great. Um, and this is a pretty basic example to start. You'll see why it gets trickier later. So 5 times 7, 4 times 6. You can see these numbers are probably not as close as we want them to be if we're trying to kind of all get the same estimation for our original problem. Okay, so let's try another uh, another multiplication here, get another product. So let's get bigger numbers here. Let's go to like 7.4 and uh, 10.9, okay? Now, <clears throat> many of us would probably see 7.4 is close to 7, 10.9, um, is, is close to 11. Now, if you put 7 times 11 as your compatible numbers, I have to be able to believe that you can do that mentally. And even though, even if it takes a little time, even if that's not instant, 7 times 11 and you know it, even if it takes a little time, if you can do it mentally, I can accept it. Okay. Um, some of us may not be able to do 7 times 11. So maybe in this case, our compatible numbers look like 7 times 10. Maybe we're just better at our 10s than our 11s and that's 70. And again, these aren't terribly close, but they're close enough so that when we do the actual math, we're gonna get, well, probably in between these two numbers somewhere. Okay, let's get even bigger. Okay, now here's where it starts to get uh, even more questionable for compatible numbers, whether I believe you can do it mentally or not. So something like this, 12.9 um, times 14.7 okay now I have to pick two numbers near those that I can do mentally okay they are getting big but what I would probably do is because I can do this I would probably do 13 and 15 that may not be mental for some of you I'm guessing 15 is probably the number you're gonna want to use over here and maybe we can stretch it down to 10. That's a bit of a stretch, but hopefully you're getting the idea. I gotta pick numbers that I can do 
mentally. Let me do one that is actually more doable for you. Let's do 10.2 um, times 21.5, okay? So here, chances are many of you would pick something like 10 times, probably 20. And when we get to these bigger numbers, we're able to stretch a little further, you know, when we were in those smaller numbers. Um, I think I had, let's find out, when we were in the smaller numbers, yeah, I had 4.9, and I said maybe 4 is a bit of a stretch. Um, but it, when we get to these bigger numbers, I'm certainly more okay with us uh, stretching that a little further. And 10 times 20, most of us will be able to do mentally. Remember, when we have these extra zeros, mental math, I can just multiply the things other than the zeros. 2 times 1 is 2. And then I just tack on the zeros that are left, right, which is 200. Um, some of us could probably, in this case, do like 10 times 22. Again, just using that mental math rule I told you. I kind of ignore the zero for now. I do 1 times 22, I get 22, and then I tack on the zero. Okay, so those are some multiplication options. Now let's get into division or, or quotients. Now the big thing with division and quotients and compatible numbers is that um, in order for me to believe that you can do it mentally, you have to do numbers that work out um, without a remainder. So let's take a look at what I mean here. Let's start with a basic example. Let's do 7.2 divided by 3.4. Now, if we're using just basic rounding rules, many would think, well, 7.2 is close to 7. 3.4 is close to 3. The problem with that is, some of you see, I end up getting a remainder if I do 7 divided by 3. Okay, So I have to pick numbers that won't give me a remainder. And that takes a little a little more work probably than the multiplication. But here maybe you can see 8 and 4. Maybe 8 and 2, starting to stretch it a bit. 6 and 3 is probably a better option than 8 and 2. But you can see in both of these cases, I don't have a remainder. OK, let's get it a little bigger. Um, how about 31.7? divided by 4.992 let's add some more decimals on there all right so again if i were just rounding to you know the nearest hole this would be 32 and 5 which will end up giving me a remainder right so that's not going to work um, some of you are probably seeing 30 divided by 5 maybe 32 and 4 right two probably decent options let's get even bigger <clears throat> let's do 52.93 divided by uh, 8.02 okay can't do 53 divided by 8 because that won't work out I can do 54 Whoops, not 54. I can do 56 divided by 8. That's the next closest 8, right? <clears throat> Just give me 7. I could do maybe 54, 9, right? So in either case, got to pick numbers that aren't going to give me a remainder. OK, pretty straightforward lesson. Uh, why don't I just give you two more to try in your notebooks? Maybe more than two, we'll see. Uh, let's do multi one multiplication, one division. So one product, one quotient. Uh, let's do 7.83 times 4.92. Now let's, let's start with two multiplication. Uh, and then let's do 3.56 times 19.8. All right, so uh, go ahead and pause the video, give those a shot, and then resume when you're set. All right, let's handle the first one. First, uh, when we're dealing with smaller numbers, I think it makes sense to pretty much pick the numbers nearest to those because we can do those mentally. This would be an 8 times 5, which would be 40. You could maybe see 7 and 5, 7 and 4, um, 8 and 4, fine options. In this case, <clears throat> uh, this would probably go to 4. And then 4 times, i got to pick a number near 19.8 I can do mentally. Hopefully, many of us pick 20. Um, maybe three times 20, 
and then we get some uh, compatible numbers to work there, right? All right, let's do two division. Let's do 33.8 divided by 9.62, and let's also do 60.3 divided by 6.5. So once again, pause the video, give them a try. All right, so the first one, we gotta be able to find numbers that don't give me a remainder, compatible numbers. For this, when I'm looking at it, I see 30 and 10, probably just because I see 10 in this number right away, and I had to make a number that would work with 10. So 30 and 10 works pretty well. Uh, if you wanna make this the right side of nine, you know, you gotta pick a number near 33 that works with nine, right? So maybe 36 and nine. So maybe 30 divided by 10, or 36 divided by nine. Both fine options, kind of smushing it in there now. Let's make a little, there we go. All right, and then the second one, probably the most obvious one you see is 60 and six, some of you. Um, if I want to make that second number a seven, uh, probably obviously need a number that uh, works with seven mentally. And the closest one I'm thinking is 63. So in this case, it turns out being 10. In this case, it turns out being nine. Now they are different in both of these, but you can see that we're close. And again, the goal for today is ballpark answers. So we can see if our answer is anywhere near uh, the right answer. All right, see you next time.